Good afternoon, South Africa, and welcome to Afternoon Express. It's good to see you, myself and Palessa, keeping you in company until half past five this afternoon on SABC3. And I'm so glad to finally be working alongside you. I mean, I feel like I'm only officially part of the family with Donut and you around. Oh, Danilo. nice. I've so, been waiting for this moment. Listen, I've been dying to ask you, when the cat's away, the mice come out to play. Yes. How's the last week been with the girls not being here? <laughs> the last week has been interesting. Huh? I have learned a lot, but good. I miss my girls. Ooh. I miss my girl. I'm so excited for you. It's one of the most exciting things to be on this couch, interviewing some of the most amazing people from around the country. And so that forget, it is good to be back. I'm kind of back for a very short period of time. We'll be able to see you guys soon again on SABC3. Something interesting is coming. It's all about the art today on the show, uh, from fashion to dance, as well as literature. We have the Darkroom Contemporary Dance Theatre in the loft with us today, uh, whose mission is to develop sustainable employment and skill development opportunities with the performing arts sector in South Africa. We're also joined by renowned Zimbabwean-born author Panache Chikumadzi, whose latest book, These Bones Shall Rise Again, all, uh, takes a look at the cultural history of her country and recognizing the role of women, workers and urban movements. Indeed, and with those elections happening in Zim not so long ago, it's a pretty uh, sort of prominent conversation yeah. to be having on the show today. And with no more than 450 rand loan as capital, young designers Molani and Mawande started their fashion label XM Creations. Later on in the show, they take us through their journey and treat us to a fashion show. So don't forget that you guys can hit us up on social media and tell us what SA designers you would like to see on Fashion Express Thursdays. You can tweet them through to at Afternoon Chat. Remember the hashtag Afternoon Express so we can find it or do go find us on our Facebook page for Afternoon Express. Now we all know that unemployment is rife in South Africa, more so in the arts sector. Mm. The Dark Room Contemporary Dance Theatre is a company that is creating solutions to the job crisis by hosting a series of educational workshops and development initiatives. Indeed, their Terrible. platform provides opportunities for trained performers and art practitioners through dance performance and film projects while encouraging audiences to appreciate and to support the art of dance. Welcome to Afternoon Express, guys. I just, I'm so in love with the way that you combine this idea of sort of film and dance. And I think it's just one of the most expressive mediums to talk about how people are feeling. I mean, you guys are working in such <laughs> True, an interesting industry. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. I think um, that is the beauty of it. Dance mm. is such an expressive thing. It's something that just crosses any boundaries of language. Yeah. It's just nonverbal communication. It's live, it's powerful. And so, yeah, we are super fortunate to mm. be working mm. in this. For some of us who are new to your amazing dance company, what is Darkroom? So Darkroom Contemporary is a dance theatre company. Uh, it was formed really because I felt that um, need in myself that I was not getting enough work as a dancer and choreographer. Mm. Um, and I kind of thought, well, let's see what we can do if we start bringing people together and, and mm. combining our strengths. Yeah. and. Yeah, so that really was where it came from. Yeah. And you two obviously came together because Dark Room is obviously very uh, synonymous with photography and trying to develop films and using right. colour and lighting. Uh, so how does the sort of film element fit into a dance company? Well, I think we, what, we want, what we wanted to start or try to create, we really wanted to entice audiences to come and watch live yeah. performances. And we mm. found that throughout out, out the years, performance arts has taken like a big knock mm. in terms of people going to watch something at, at an official theatre space. Yeah. And we thought that if, 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 if we could entice them in their homes by giving them something to watch at home, maybe this would introduce them to a live 
actual dance piece. Mm. And so it, it kind of made sense then to, to start up with dance form and hopefully make it interesting enough for, for, for people to come and watch a, a live mm. show. It's stunning. From what I've seen mm. with the rehearsal of your dances, the NCT construct set is, is something I've never seen before. <laughs> Why, how did you guys flip it from the original piece to what you're performing tonight, I believe? Yes. So, um, INC was a, a project that we started in March of this year. It was performed in Johannesburg at the Dance Umbrella mm. Festival. It was performed at the Center for the Less Good Idea in Mabuneng, um, and then in Cape Town as well. And so now the opportunity came up to revisit this uh, production and to bring it into a different type of a space. And so mm. taking it from the theater stage, putting it into a gallery space, which is the Youngblood Arts and Culture Development Building, um, and so that comes with interesting challenges, just because it's not a theatre. Yeah. Um, and so you kind of have to revisit and, and rethink and adapt things a little bit yeah. to, to really make it work in that specific mm. setting. Mm. Um, but I think it's, it's really quite, quite an interesting process yeah. and also for the, for the audience to experience it from a different type mm. of a viewpoint. They're almost on the stage with the dancers. So cool. It's a lot more, <laughs> it's a lot yeah. more close up. That's so, amazing. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's really, yeah. it's a great process to... But it feels yeah, necessary it. almost. It feels like an expression <laughs> of what's actually going on in the world of dance. Like you're trying to say that things are in a state of flux. Things are moving and changing. You've got to try and adapt and you right. know, make sure. something with what's going on with the times. And I, I'm dying to know what's happening with the world of dance. I mean, where are our dancers today? Where are the talents? I mean, are they leaving? Are they staying? Is it a, is it a medium that is dying? I, I wouldn't say it's dying. It's not I dying, think no. There, there are definitely unique challenges that, that any artist faces mm. um, in, in South Africa, but, but in other countries too. Yeah. It's not unique to us. Um, but certainly in dance, yes, it is, a, like you say, contemporary dance is a modern of the time thing. Yeah. And we kind of have to keep, keep that in, in mind when, when we are um, designing work. Mm. So I think that's very important, and that's where our film work and and all of these other mediums that we incorporate, that's, that's where that comes from. Mm. To really try and, and, and be current and, mm. and reflect the world we live in. Yeah. Louis, if I could just jump in there. I, I, I also think a, 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 a good point to, to make is, is that, is that we, we, choreographers like, like Louise and other choreographers in, in Cape Town and South Africa are, are having to make work that is a lot more enticing and a, and a lot more contemporary mm -hmm. to keep our really great performers in South Africa. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, we, 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 we often think that the grass is better on the other side. Mm -hmm. And it's, 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 it's really not. We've got yeah. phenomenal dancers totally. that, that live and breathe in, 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 in our spaces. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're lucky to, to be able to yeah. work with them here. Yeah. And you spoke about truly cultivating those type of dancers. You guys also have an initiative, an amazing initiative that you're working with, right. uh, with the trainee program. Sure. Yes, so uh, with all of our productions that we've been busy with this, this year, we started to introduce, um, or to just open up the space um, to say that, yes, we are working with a selected group of dancers, but we also want to open it up to everyone who's mm. in Cape Town, who's dancing and who's mm. um, freelancing and doing their thing. And so that sort of has just broadened the network. And I think it's really been a great space to share our work with, with all young dancers and specifically recent graduates who, who are wanting to get into the professional industry. Mm. And that um, that's been, yeah, that's yeah. been successful in that sense, definitely. Yeah. And I love that because mm. I think it's that idea of really just giving that opportunity, that space, right. the stage to do something, which yes. I think is, is not happening in South Africa at the moment. But what about the audiences on the other side? Because I, I guess consumers are the reason why people are coming to the theatre, yeah. you know, coming to watch these sort of shows. Mm. What is the thought for, for people at home who maybe aren't celebrating South African dance as much as we well, should I think, be? Well, I mean, for... Do you mind? I think I, th I think audiences are really the beginning and the end all of everything. I mean, if we if we want to really cultivate a, a vibrant arts community in Cape Town, which is supposedly this massive art hub yeah. in any case, so audiences so need first to first Thursday. <laughs> yeah. yes. Besides first Thursdays, uh, I mean, how many people actually go and look just at for the art drinks, we know. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, I think yeah, absolutely. People people need to take a chance. Um, Come and have a look. Come mm. and support local arts. Come and support local artists. And then make an informed 
decision, either mm. either that was for you or, or, or it wasn't for you. Mm. But Darkroom, uh, we're very lucky. We really are. Um, mm. we, we we have a we have a fantastic uh, base of of, uh, of audience members that that has been supporting us loyally of, of, over the past few years, yeah, and we hope to be able yeah, to absolutely. to grow this. But I also think um, it's often so lovely to hear people's feedback after a, sure. a performance who haven't seen dance mm. and who haven't taken that plunge and then suddenly a friend drags them to a performance and mm. they leave feeling really inspired yeah. and or just surprised at, at having expected something completely different so yeah. i think it is that thing of just even if you think you don't it's not your thing go and see it and, yeah. and go and support the artists, um, mm. all of them out there, and, and then make make a decision. Absolutely. With, yeah. Art is designed voice. to change you, and I exactly. think watching a performance like that does. I mean, I've never been to a performance uh, art piece and never felt like I've left there changed. Mm. Um, Absolutely. It's a beautiful medium. So you guys are doing amazing work, and I, I really just want to salute you. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm already much. inspired. I can't wait to see the performance later. Thank it's insane. So and the soundtrack is awesome. Just <laughs> yeah. I love the tune that they're dancing to. So stay tuned for that. After the break, we head over to the kitchen to make the, uh, it's called a Cinerusk. I don't think if you guys believe us, you're going to have to just stay right where you are. And later we chat to Zimbabwean author Panasha Chikomati, who is uh, considered one of the most promising young writers of the Born Free generation. Our guests on Afternoon Express fly domestically with Mango. Enjoy outstanding service, online check-in and seat selection. With the widest booking and payment options, Mango is the only airline globally to accept store charge cards as a means of payment. Fly in comfort with ergonomically efficient seats for more legroom aboard a fleet of new generation Boeing 737-800 aircraft. Join the guests of Afternoon Express and fly Mango.
Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, when it comes to dessert trends, it's all about meshing our favorite flavors together to create one ultimate end result. We've they've been the crew nuts, the crew fins, or even the docents. But Aya has a recipe that is the best creation yet. He's taking our favorite baker's good morning rusk and our best pastry, the cinnamon roll, and combining them to create the ultimate tea time treat, the cinnamon rusk. Aya, yeah. welcome back to the kitchen. Yeah, I missed you when you gone. Thank you. Oh, I missed you Why as do you well. run away from me? <laughs> you guys don't want me anymore. So anyway, um, it's fine. Um, we're doing our cinnabons today using our rusk. The twist okay. to them is that we're using rusk instead of having the normal classic way of it. So with our new baker's cinnamon rusk, we're using the buttermilk flavor. So you get this in three different flavors. How awesome is that? Yum. You get the chocolate, you get yes. the buttermilk, you get the muesli one. And then yeah. today we're using the... Uh, but I'm looking at which believe. gives it that nice creaminess to it. So to start over, you have your dough here. And then if you don't want to use a dough, you can get like your normal um, puff paste to use it. Oh, yeah, so from our favorite baker's man down yeah. the road. Yes. So um, I've got the brown sugar here. I'm going to mix it with my soft butter. Okay. So you can use salted or unsalted up to you because the salt also gives the desserts that nice flavor to it. And then I'm going to be adding my cinnamon to that. Oh, cinnamon always smells yes. so good. I'm a sucker for cinnamon. <laughs> and then while I'm busy mixing this, so you must mix this till it's nice and doughy and creamy so that Perfect. it, yeah. And then while I'm doing this, you can now crush this rusk for me. Look, Chef Kim Like, take all me, the stress, take yeah, all the stress Chef out of Clem it. Chef Kim made me do this the other day and I suck. So hopefully I'll do, I'll do you proud, Chef Kim. Yes. 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 I must have hit you in the head. So the idea is to also give our cinnamon rusk that nice, you know, when, you, when you're having the cinnamon buns, you get that nice softness to it. But now that we're adding the rusk, you're going to get that nice crispy texture from and them. And crunch. Exactly. Mm. Perfect, okay. So then what do I do with my uh So you're gonna sprinkle that glass rust. yeah after I'm done mixing this. Okay, perfect. Alright, so let's do it. Let's add. Already so I am just, dying. I want it the end result. So good, eh? Yes. Okay, perfect. So you just sprinkle that all over the dough. Mm. What's your favorite flavor of the Baker's Good Morning Rusks? It's that nice baked, you know, you get that nice smokiness from it from the oven. Mm. I like that, you know, a lot. It's, it's so nice and nutty and also that creaminess from it. That creaminess. Yeah. Okay, can and I then you sprinkle, sprinkle that on top. Okay, perfect. I can do that. Yes. And the syrup, how do we make the syrup for this? So this goes with um, a caramel cream. syrup, which is so easy to make. You just need your sugar, your butter and cream. So what you do, you put your sugar in the pan and once it starts melting, you add a bit of your butter. And then once your butter is melting, you stir up together and then you add your cream for like, and then you leave it to simmer for like five to 10 minutes. Okay, okay. And then after that, you use a baking pan, like a muffin tray. You roll it so nice and softly. Okay. Look at that. So how I am um, like with measuring how equal does each slice need to be when you're slicing it? I mean, it, at it the same matter? time, it, it, it doesn't matter, but unless you're getting paid for it, so you have to do it the right way. <laughs> but if you're doing for family, I mean, no one likes like food that has been done at home. Yeah. That's so nice and rustic. You how beautiful is that? And then you just dunk this in your pan. And then already in my pan, I already have my, my, my syrup, which is the uh, caramel. Perfect. It looks so good. Look at that. And then you just... Press it down a bit. Perfect. Okay, and then my, in your pan. My Afternoon Express family, if you want this amazing recipe, don't forget to SMS the word uh, bakers, bakers to 33650, and this recipe will be coming to your device. Yum. And you just leave it in the oven for like 15 to 20 minutes, you know. Brilliant. That's awesome. Look at it. This kitchen is truly Beautiful. heating up. Okay, perfect. So now from this, how long do we leave it in the so, oven for? And when you preheat it, how, what, to what so, degree? So you preheat your oven to 180 before 180. you do everything. So your oven must always be hot before okay. you even start with your prep. And then after that, you leave it in there for 20 to 20, 20, um, 15 to 20 minutes. 20 to 15 and then let it cool. It. Before you eat it, you leave it in the pan for like another five minutes to cool down and also to chill because nice. you don't want to burn yourself. Nice. And you can enjoy this with a cup of milk. Oh, lovely. And then the end result looks a little something like this. It looks beautiful. Look <laughs> oh, at it. It's so nice it's and caramelized stunning. very perfectly. Okay. Do you want to share one? Break you one. know me, I'm always eating in the kitchen. Let me feed you actually. Yes. Let's spice it up a bit. Mmm. Good. Stunning. <laughs> so. <laughs> Get your hands on this mouth-watering Baker's Good Morning Buttermilk Rusk Stuffed Cinnamon Roll. That's a mouthful indeed. Recipe. SMS the keyword Baker's to 33650 and you'll receive this recipe 
with the link SMSs cost 1 Rand 50. No free SMSs apply. <laughs> SMS afternoon express. .co .za. Good. You mm. get the price from it. Awesome. You gave me so much food. <laughs> way to say good morning. Discover new Baker's Good Morning Rusks in three delicious flavors, now available in a resealable container. Now that your bellies are full, get those phones out and remember to share your ideas on who you would like to see on Fashion Express Thursdays. Find us at Afternoon Chat on Twitter and don't forget the hashtag Afternoon Express so we can find your particular comment or find us on our Facebook page, we're Afternoon Express. Now if you're wondering what's coming up on the show, uh, don't miss it because we've got Panache Chigamadzi, a Zimbabwean-born author of These Bones Will Rise, plus a performance from the Darkroom Contemporary Dance Theatre. It's not to be missed. Tough getting up in the morning. That's why for breakfast, I'm making eggs Benedict. Get it? <laughs> I just love a good food pun. Share your photo and recipe of your favorite winter dish with the hashtag for the love of winter, and you could win 5,000 Rand in weekly prizes and stand a chance to win a grand prize of 100,000 Rand. Roads quality for the love of winter.
Welcome back to Afternoon Express on SABC3. Now the interview I've personally been waiting for. She is the <laughs> founding editor of the Vanguard magazine, a platform for young black women coming of age in the post-apartheid South Africa. Indeed. She's also a contributing editor to Johannesburg Review of Books and her work has been featured in The Guardian, The New York Times and The Washington, Washington Post, among other prolific publications. So this woman is really one to watch. Yeah. Now her latest book, These Bones Will Rise Again, is to be published in the UK. Panache Chakamadzi, sorry, is clearly on the rise, girl. Hey. Congrats. Thank you very much. You are truly an inspiration, as, they, as you said, to up-and-coming black women of mm -hmm. all, I don't even believe, only in post-apartheid South Africa, but across the world. Mm -hmm. So you have a book that you've just published. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about These Bones Will Rise Again. Mm -hmm. Well, These Bones Will Rise Again was my second book. Uh, the first book was Seed Medicine, which I came here um, to, to speak yes. about. And now this is my second book, which is a work of creative nonfiction. Um, and it's a response to Zimbabwe's coup, not a coup. Uh, <laughs> that saw the removal of Robert Mugabe um, in November last year. And I was asked to respond to what this moment means to me as someone who is a so-called born free, both of South Africa as well as Zimbabwe. I was born in, in Zimbabwe and grew up in South Africa. Um, and I decided that this moment, which was codenamed Operation Restore mm. Legacy in square brackets of the liberation struggle by the military, um, I decided that I wanted to respond to this, this moment created by big men through the lens of two women who are incredibly important in my mm. life. Um, my late grandmother, Mbuya Lilian Chigumadzi, who passed away a few weeks before the coup, not a coup, happened, um, as well as Mbuya Nehanda, who is an anti-colonial heroine um, who fought in one of Zimbabwe's first major anti-colonial uprisings in the 1890s um, and is probably the most famous person in our liberation history. Sure, so yeah. I decided I wanted to respond to this moment of big men through the lens of a big and so-called little woman. Mm. It's quite an interesting space to be in because obviously the whole world was watching at that particular mm -hmm. time and so what parts do you respond to how do you go about investigating the truth when there is so much sort of news out there and I, I even find the style that which you had wrote this quite interesting using part essay part memoir and kind of fusing those two worlds together was that a, a conscious decision to try and tell these stories in a way that wasn't going to be just a you know purely factual book Sure. I mean, definitely it remains a factual book, yeah, but, but I mean, it's, it's not, not just beyond that. Yeah, yeah definitely. I think um, it was important because I think for me, growing up outside of Zimbabwe and as well as moving in between the two spaces, South Africa and Zimbabwe, there's a way in which we only understand it, the country through the idea of Mugabe Zimbabwe. Yeah. We're not able to see it um, through the people. And yeah. of course, it's a, it's, he's a figure that's been there for more than 37 years ruling, but it's really important to be able to speak to the country through its people beyond the politics politicians yeah. to understand who we are and where we've come from. Mm. So I decided that there's two weeks of history um, that's been created here, but I wanted to go back over 150, if not centuries, um, mm. you know, to understand this particular moment so we could see beyond uh, the figure of Mugabe, because, for example, I think many of us really felt that once he's gone, everything's going to change. Mm. And of course, there have been some important changes, but I think um, particularly as we see after the elections had happened um, and there was the violence that had been uh, meted out by the by the military you see that maybe things haven't really changed mm -hmm. and there's going to be a lot more that needs to happen um, in order to have a different kind of country and that why it was important for me to respond to this moment outside of the figure yeah. of this of this big man and be able to think about it through ordinary people yeah stunning and then you decided to publish this book in the UK. Why that decision? So it was actually because I was commissioned. Uh, so my UK yes. publisher is uh, Indigo Press, and it's uh, published and directed by um, Eloa Katama Alfrey, who's a Zimbabwean um, uh, editor and publisher. And she's been all over the world. And I'd met her a, a, you know, a couple of months, months back and spoken to her about the research I'd been doing on Buyane Handa, the anti-colonial heroine. And so she asked me if I thought I could respond to this moment. And I decided I would mm. speak about the these two women as opposed to speaking about these men. So that's why the timing was just perfect. Um, she spoke about this, she spoke to me about this two weeks or so after the coup not a coup happened. And it took a couple of months of scrambling and I'm then sure. we had to uh, publish in June um, uh, in the UK. Uh, we then launched in Zimbabwe, which was fantastic. We had a launch in Harare a few days before the election had happened, which was really great. Mm. And we've been throughout South Africa from Johannesburg, Bulukwani, which is part of where I grew up. And now we're in Cape Town. We're mm. gonna have our launch tomorrow evening. 
I'm super excited yes. for it. I mean, people must go follow you online. I just really enjoy listening to the way that you comment on what's going on in the world around us. I think you've got an incredible way of sort of packaging this for, you know, the everyday person who's trying to understand, you know, what's really going on. Because all mm. we see is what we see in the media. And you, you found a way to really tell those stories in a very truthful, but mm -hmm. I think it's sort of kind and gentle way as well. And, mm. um, you know, the publishing internationally and the publishing locally, I, I would have been very concerned and worried about the publishing in, in sort of Zimbabwe, especially when everyone was trying to be like, can we just focus on the positive for a second here? <laughs> We're not afraid of any backlash. Was there any at any point a, a threat to your life? I don't think as much as a threat to my life. I don't think I'm that important just yet. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I'll, I'll let you know when that happens. But um, uh, what was interesting was that a lot of people really asked me, are you sure about the wisdom um, of publishing mm. um, and launching in Harare, in the middle of town, mm. um, you know, a few days before the election happened? And really, there was actually just a number of functional reasons. I needed to go. I'm about to move overseas. So there's a whole range of things that are happening. So I said, if I don't do this right now, um, yeah. this is never going to, okay. to happen. And so I just decided to really trust my gut instinct and publish and decide to hope for the best. And really, um, it was a wonderful day. People spoke freely. We spoke yeah. about things that are quite controversial, whether it is the genocide of people in Matibela land. We spoke about the very... Um, the repressive nature of, of the military that many of us would, you know, people were taking uh, selfies mm -hmm. with. So there is the pressure sometimes to go with the flow and people are just so happy um, about, you know, particular kinds of changes. But I think, you know, it's Aaron Dati Roy who says that the role of the right is not to be popular. Sometimes you have to, in speaking to your truth, you're going to say things that aren't really what people want to hear. Yeah. Um, and, you know, sometimes it's not nice to say, but you almost say that, you know, I told you so. If we, if mm -hmm. we take a step back and that's the role of the right is to be able to take a step back whether it's a good or bad moment, and that's what yeah. was important for me to, to do. Yo. Mm. I can't wait for this third book to come out, like another thing to come out of your... <laughs> we're still here. We're still I know, this. yeah, we're still here. I mean, this book is amazing, and I can't wait for, I think, everyone to kind of give a, a little, get a little bit more insight of what's going on, but through such a creative means. So huge congratulations on this one, and can't wait for more books to come. Thank you. All right, let's get cooking. Enjoy full fruit flavour in salon or green tea varieties of Manhattan iced tea. Made with love by Clover. It's Thirsty Thursday and about time to taste some time out. We're kicking back with the ultimate refreshment with the Manhattan Lemon Cucumber Mocktail made with the new Clover Manhattan Lemon Rooibos flavor. So join us by SMSing the keyword Clover to 33650 to get this mocktail recipe sent to you. Chef Aya, let's do it again. Yes, I mean it's Pusa Thursdays, our what? Pusa Thursdays. Oh, yeah. So we're making a beautiful mocktail today using yes. our clover Manhattan. And yes. this is made with like salmon tea, rooibos tea, mm. and green tea. Who doesn't love that? So um, with this, I'm going to start uh -huh. with... So before you start with anything, you have to make your granita. So our granita is made with cucumber. So what happens, um, a granita is, is served as a dessert. You, you crush it, so it's cucumber peeled, and then you remove the seeds, you freeze it. And then after that, you blitz it. That's why you get that. So that's nice. the last part of it. And then I'm going to be mixing my cucumber. I'm slicing my cucumber with mm. a peeler. What I like about this uh, nice refreshment is yeah. that it's a new take on ice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. instead of just putting the normal ice blocks, this comes with the flavor and packs that punch. And it keeps it fresh. And it does. And keep it looks it fresh. good. <laughs> it does, it does. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna be adding my lemon to it. I always feel like a nice ribboned cucumber looks so chic. It can you I put it in also my with, glass of water and with a lot of ice also, I mean with ice it, it, it turns it, it makes it cold, you know. And then I'm gonna be adding my soda water to it. Another amazing flavor that I love of the Clover Manhattan iced tea, yeah. the rooibos, the new rooibos flavor it is the berry. Awesome, eh? It yeah, tastes great. It's refreshing. So now I'm going to be adding my Manhattan to it now to okay. get that nice. So with this, Ooh. you don't even have to add your sugar to your granita because the Manhattan also has sugar in it. Perfect. So with this, I'm going to be finishing off with my granita. And while I'm doing this, so your granita, you can also add, you can chop some mint, add it to it to get that nice freshness to it. Nice, so now yeah. for garnish for me, now that we have our own tree of mint here, can you just get yes. a couple of leaves okay, for me there? a couple of leaves. Yes. Look how beautiful that is. Just put it on top. Right. I'm gonna try and make this look as pretty as possible. Come on. There you go. Awesome, look, that's beautiful. <laughs> Perfect. This mocktail idea is certainly set to impress your guests. Give them, give them a go and taste the time out with some new and delicious edition of the Clover Manhattan Roybus Iced Tea.
Made with love by Clover. Cheers, thank Cheers. you very much. It's actually quite Cheers, nice. Mm. Mm, it is. Mm. Oh, delicious. Mm, thirsty Thursday. We've had a drink. We've spoken about a whole bunch of amazing authors. We've had the dance company join us on the show. And after the break, we're meeting the founders of XM Creations, who recently showcased for the first time at South African Men's Wear Week. Their stuff is insane. Can't wait to show you. Mm. Remember to tell us which South African designer you would like to see in the loft by tweeting us at Afternoon Chat using the official hashtag Afternoon Express or comment on our Facebook page. Hey, Baxter. <laughs> Enjoy full fruit flavour in salon or green tea varieties of Manhattan iced tea. Made with love by Clover. Welcome back to Afternoon Express live on SABC3. It's good to be with you and it's good to be back in the loft. Uh, through word of mouth, XM Creations became known for their stellar work when it comes to clothing designs. Coming from humble beginnings, Molani and Mawande are now operating a fully-fledged design house in their community. From designing matric jackets and track suits and to showcasing their collection, it's an African Men's Wear Week. They're an inspiration to all up-and-coming designers, truly, guys. Welcome Is to the loft. I can't wait to like get through the fashion design a little bit later on. Oh, yes. Yeah. How did you guys start a label with 450 Rand in your back pocket? Yeah, Our okay. plan was to actually start making matric balls, matric jackets first, and mm. then move on to making matric ball dresses. Uh, the plan for the 450 was to, for us to use it to make samples for us to actually make Ilandos samples for matric balls and go to schools, visit each and every school so that we may be able to actually show them whatever we have and then actually start working with them again. Mm. So you guys have always believed in your vision and I'm sure from back in those days working in that RDP when things weren't as great and glamorous as they are now, you guys still had a vision for yourselves. How did you pick yourselves up on the days that weren't looking so bright and cheerful? On the days I from being robbed to having clients not comfortable coming to where you guys operate from and uh, using a ceiling board as a, on your bed mm -hmm. to cut out your designs. How, how did you guys pick yourselves up every single time? I believe by young Indonesian alone because young Indonesian basically when it comes to the metric jacket, this is a sense of metric jacket because they are into a lula because they have space as a so as a squad when it comes in those metric jackets. That's why I can go to the Puma Sensor, Illogos, a farewell, the cartel. 
and just to add more to what he's saying kuba sometimes a situation yako shouldn't actually limit you from doing what you want to do when yeah. you love something when zanoba and doing not to actually do it we understand mm. so even though business challenges is mean see people robbing us and everything but basically okay we want to achieve this and obviously nepi na ijeni yomuntu ine challenges zayo so we had to actually be strong for ourselves because where we come from when come to close to you from crossroads it's like mm. okay we are about school you can you are supposed to be robbing people you understand mm. so we had to push hard so that even those abaza sibona bancinci nathi babona ba actually there's good things as open crossroads you understand mm. so that yeah. was the plan in summary basic what the guys are saying is that something has to always have a beginning for it to have that amazing yeah. end and you're always willing to go through the hardness to go through when it's not as pretty mm. to get to where you need to be and more than anything they want to be an inspiration to those coming after yeah. them to say look we did it you can too yeah it's such because there's such a stigma i mean in, in south africa around different regions and where people live and how that sort yes. of operates and you guys want to break out of that but yeah. I, i'm dying to know about the the real reason behind why fashion and why design because you guys could have gone into very easy careers you guys could have chosen to go and you know start somewhere be an intern somewhere earn a little bit of cash here and there you had to really have fought for this fashion design thing which means you must have really believed in it and i also am interested i know gutu kolani's mom was a seamstress <laughs> how how did that influence you to start was she like hey my child uh upendo la mbozo ne uh when it comes into efficient design because the nins into basing gardens so because of umama wa tunga so yona jeni is that gone but okay you change in noitata le and then luckily in that the banoma one which is a big thing at the same thing and then go so kubeka senza u design That's mm-hmm. perfect. So basically with with the collaboration between you two, I mean, for you there was only one way but fashion design and by meeting each other you kind of inspired each other to continue yes. going. Uh for an example when I came to him I was like, okay dude, when Zenja needs a go to tongue and everything, did you go to a fashion design school because mm-hmm. I knew my marks were not going to allow me to actually get into London you know, University to yeah. study fashion. And he was like, no, I went to Isuing School as a college which was land to end. I was like, okay, mm-hmm. let me do the same thing, okay? And then he was like, okay, I I'm listening to you right now saying all these things but then we need money to actually register yeah. there. And what you know it's fine I will actually borrow you the money wow. for you to go and actually come back and then we can utilize the ideas that you have. Yeah. I had quite a number of ideas. I'm you sure. can do this and this and that and that and that. He was like okay, whoa, relax. First yeah. learn how to sew and how to actually make patterns, yeah. which was a big challenge for us because we had to actually buy things sometimes from the streets and actually cut them off so it's hard then yes. put them together again yes. so that we know okay yenzo akanjena ngohlo botshe ngohlumbuti but then through yonke nondole we've actually mm. Yeah. But the most creative designers do the same thing. I mean they they had to work through that kind of stuff and that's what real good design comes from is is that innovation. And 2015 was a big year. I mean obviously you guys are going through this whole series of producing clothes for people but then the runway was the next step I'd imagine. You got your first show. How was it? Ah uh, yeah. Uh because the service is sent in special needs thing I has when it comes uba siya ku fashion shows in Dwesinjal. So ukuya ku fashion show for the first time sibonwe ngabantu kuba like isiqhelo base studio sehlala endawe ne1 so ibinto enhle kakhulu siphinde sibone ba abantu xa bebona umsebenzi wethu ba bonwa bakanjani so it's all about it design ba abantu xa bebona umsebenzi wethu ba respond akanjani na so your work being broadcasted to such a broad audience and seeing the joy and the warm response that you got continue to push you guys forward mm. and show you that hey we kind of doing something right here yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're indeed now you're on afternoon express and it's getting to showcase to the rest of the country so a couple of million people are about to enjoy the fashion that you guys are putting together mm. let's talk through these looks that you've got let's bring out our first model tell us about this one oh this was our look one from SA menswear mm. he was the first designer first designer we actually showcased and it's more of a summary design the short you can wear with elanders and elwandle and actually team it up with a t-shirt or something and even the sheer top you can actually wear it with something else if you looking carefully see how you mix elanders and elanders in fabrics and textures and yes. come up with very beautiful designs that people mm. can actually wear you guys are amazing at playing with those different textures playing yeah. with different colors i mean i see myself in durban beach fronts with those 
shorts and a beautiful tank top. Girl, but it's winter, yo! Oh, uh, freeze! In Durban, mm. there's no winter. No, don't lie. I've seen those that wind. I've seen that wind blow. It's very creative. It's very out there. It, it's it's this playing that you guys have got with color here. I think it's something really exciting to explore. Is that, is that a conscious decision? Are you guys colorful people just wanting to showcase that you're bright and energized. Particularly for this one, we were inspired. The whole collection was inspired by the South African flag. Mm. For we relate to it in different ways. It has different colors, but each and every one of us relates in a different way yeah. to each and every color. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about this one. This dress is gorgeous. You know that uh, the the polka dot. It takes me back to Sapphire Town days. It takes me back to you know dancing in the dance halls. Obviously, not being born yet, mm. but <laughs> I'm so intrigued by that era. Uh, for the outfit, ne? We just created for Babesia's buses of the mm. Mm. So, best for now, something different because from the Because almost is on. Yeah. Uh, mm. upper dots, seven say polka dots, which with Emix, Lenduka, this side, Kukwe Kalamos, Kune, Stripes, Stripes, yeah. So, best for now, would just sit and get Lenduka, get fabric. It's just that play of fabric, I love that. Oh, this is bright and bold, I love it. Bonjour, so. bonjour, madame. <laughs> yeah. Talk to us through this look, okay. guys. It's, uh, your, it's your love, it's your fashion. Uh, this one was inspired by the shirts. If you notice, there are ladies who actually have these shirts that are mm. open here. Mm. We're like, these days, uh, fashion is very gender fluid. Yes. You can wear something from your sister and your sister can wear something from you. So that's why we actually decided to make that, that shirt. And then the silhouette with the pleat at the front is usually, you usually see pleats behind your mother's skirt. But yeah. you decided to actually bring it to your pants right now. You understand? Yeah. I see. Yeah. I like the details as well on the sort of pants and you're going for that, so I'd imagine almost wearing rollerblades and mm. sort of rolling around, uh, you know, a skater park. It, it is really, really interesting. And I, I like that idea of gender fluidity in, in terms of fashion. I mean, everyone's sort of jumping on it and it's, yes. it, it gives you so much more room. Well, girl, this is, this is beautiful. it, mm. honey, yes. Oh, Lena, like the metric balls. So, best for the I is about a good fabric as Trinity, who's a big metric ball. I know something colorful. Yes. So, because usually people go for the lace. And the, 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 the texture of the, the silk lace, fabric. The you, satin. you need to actually come up with something and be different, you understand? Because mm. we love catering for clients who are actually different as well. You understand? Yeah. And each and every time we make a, a garment for a client, we make sure that we include you into making it so that we can actually grasp your, your, your take on it and your personality. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Also, was, obviously, we were celebrating women this month, and I think it's really cool to be able to say you got the woman figure, and so you've left a bit of skin, you left the shoulders, you left the back open, yes. mm. and to be able to showcase that we are like, yeah, women are beautiful. And it's like, let's show those parts. The fashion is a. Yes. a the Clothes that you wear should be a, um, or an expression of who you are, yes. yeah. um, and so this gets to do a bit of both of those things. So, gents, well done. The line is looking amazing. Thank you so much. We're really yes. proud of you. Mm, thank you. Awesome. So, are where you guys are because we have the Darkroom Contemporary Dance Company. They're going to be treating us to a live performance right here on Afternoon Express. Stay right where you are.
Welcome back to Afternoon Express on SABC3. Now, the darkroom contemporary flagship performance in C is back by popular demand. It was originally created in collaboration with a host of distinct interdisciplinary artists, and we have the pleasure of enjoying a sample of this mastery today. It's titled In C Deconstructed. Enjoy. Like, I mean, it feels just watching it was like a reflection of my week. It was like banging my head against the wall and then throwing myself around. And, yeah, I'm like going this way, that way. It feels like a sort of like commentary on where we are in the moment in, in the world. That was incredible. <laughs> I think, yes. Well, um, it, it's what contemporary art is, it's what we were talking about earlier. Yeah. It's to, to try and take what the world is, all those influences, everything that's going on in life, and and put it across in, in a different type of a way. Yeah, mm. and everyone gets interpreted in their own right and kind of, you know, have Absolutely. their story be told Absolutely. on stage. Absolutely. It's yeah. beautiful. Mm. And from your side, I mean, the future of dance, where, where do you see The it? future of dance in our country is bright. I'm excited for it. Uh, I, 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 I genuinely am super excited for it. I think there's a tremendous wall of talent, and I think with the right support from our audiences, from, from shows like this, thank you very much for having us on. Mm. I think the future is very, very bright, and hopefully we get to collaborate with these geniuses sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and basically sitting on the couch, what I see are incredible individuals following their dreams relentlessly. Men, do you have anything or any pearls of wisdom to say to young and up-and-coming designers? No, no, basically. Whatever you don't at least when you are going to do it, you are going to do it. You are going to Push through. Don't look at what others are doing. Just focus on what you're doing, and actually, yeah. if you want to follow your dreams, 
it's it's what you're saying is so true just focus on the end goal don't worry about what anyone yes. else is doing mm -hmm. you push your passion without fear and and go boldly to it mm, i love it i mean generally speaking the creative industry in south africa is so under supported we've got so many incredible talents here yeah. and a lot of people are restricted by their own fear um you know growing up in in poverty i think people are really scared of you know taking the route towards creativity because it's a life of poverty moving forward <laughs> yeah. it's a life of loving what you do not necessarily loving the money in the, the penthouse building um and so i think it's a it's an industry interesting industry to go into because it has to be about love absolutely yes and and i think really creative people are the future that that's where the world is going is is really to uh, there's an appreciation for the creative arts and the creative thinking that's behind it absolutely yeah, totally and we haven't asked you about you guys your thoughts on the world of fashion moving forward do we want to see more fashion designers make their way into the industry what's happening in ikasi like what's going on what are people you know what's bubbling under the surface that's going to rise soon to men's Wear week sa men's Wear week etc what i would say is that there's a lot of talent ikasi like I usually say to my peers, people should actually respect our Nandabasu because it's mm. here, which means we push through each and every Landos. And sometimes yes. people don't understand our fashion, but as time goes on, they will understand, they will see what we have, you understand? For us, it was a big opportunity showcasing the SMNs way. We brought Indwenga Zanga, which is what we think, you understand? We don't care if the trends are going this side, yeah. but what we want to land see your Tina, you see Bona Galesai. Stunning. Yeah. And that's what I take away. Be who you are, no matter what. And with that, you'll get to your end goal. Stunning. You feel motivated today, Dan? I feel motivated. I mean, we've got a chance to interview so many amazing fashion designers, but it's cool to see the guys who are doing, you know, that work on the ground, who are just becoming who they are and themselves, you know, developing something that's new and interesting and exciting and dance as well. I mean, contemporary is all about trying to, you know, express what's going on in the world around you. So. Well done to all of you guys for, for pioneering the space, yeah. and it's good to have you on Afternoon Express. We exist because you exist. Yeah, yeah thank you mm. so thank much, you guys. You guys have truly, I've learned so much from sitting down with all four of you. So thank you for joining us in the loft. Thank you. Guys. Now, join us tomorrow as we chat to actress and producer Salim, Salamina Musese on her first big budget feature film, Baby Mamas, and we get a treat and we get a treat by a performance by an a cappella group, Anat Notes. I love them. They've been on Expresso in the morning. Okay. I listen to them on the radio. They are some of the most talented people you'll meet in the country. So enjoy it, South Africa. It was good to be back, and I hope you will see you on SABC3 soon. Good night and happy eating. Made with love by Clover. Another feel-good production.